Hello. Good morning. If it's morning for you. I figured. After we did Tales of Neon Sea, I want to do something else that's uh, a little bit in like a cyberpunky vein. Uh, so I'm, I'm gonna go with Shadowrun. Shadowrun Returns is by Harebrained Schemes. And we're gonna play through um, the introductory sort of campaign Dead Man Switch. gonna go normal. I'm a normal person. I have no idea what sort of character I want to create. Oh, a Decker. I'm gonna create a Decker. Maybe. Ritter might be fun. enough. I don't want to be a mage. It'd be fun to try and be a rigger. Let's do this one. Karma. 
We could go and get some decking ability to start with too. We upgrade our drone stuff. Yeah, okay. There will be a really crappy decker, and we'll have a little bit of drone fighting ability. Say probably not gang. Not socially. Hmm. Maybe security? Yeah, maybe it's to run like corporate security using drones, and so that's why I'm skilled with drones, I don't know, I'll just go with that. And our name's Baconator. Your apartment, three o'clock in the morning. It's got four walls, a roof, and isn't on fire. Even the cockroaches have fled in search of better accommodations. Not exactly a runner's dream pad, but right now, it's about all you have left. Running the shadows is all about feast or famine. One day, your Nova Hot working jobs allow you to eat at five-star restaurants. The next, well, you're here. This one's a famine for the ages. Slagging fixer hasn't called. The money's run out and then some. Sinless and free. Free to starve in the cracks of a society run by megacorps who just want your nuyen. Something needs to change, and soon. Um, oh, I have a Doberman drone. This where I live? It's disgusting. contracts, that sort of thing. The list is sad, dried up. Well, it goes on, all either dead ends or just plain dead. It's my calendar, it's empty. Oh, my vid phone's for me. Oh, no, well, it's. Screw that, that's not it. My bank balance. Stay of the oh, it's broken. The screen leaps to life, making you squint against its brightness. The face on the screen is laughing. Sam Watts. Hey buddy! Hope I didn't catch you at a bad time. <laughs> he giggles. He's drunk again, or worse. Where you been, Sam? I haven't heard from you in months. <laughs> oh, don't bother with your side of the conversation. I'm not really here. Just one reason for this vid. Someone finally geeked me. I'm dead. I probably had it coming. 
When you're an unsavory character like myself, who tends to associate with other unsavory characters who often partake in unsavory business, like you, for example. So why am I dead? Who, who knows? Probably my fault. I wonder where you are right now. I bet you hit a big payday and you're living high on the hog somewhere. Some of us are born winners, and some of us, they're me. Hey, you remember that Renraku run when things went to hell and we lost Dowd? Or that makeshift saloon on the docks afterward? I really had your back that night, didn't I? Dowd, that's a name you haven't heard in a long time. Okay, our buddy Sam, he, he did. Three years ago, the night Dowd went down. New Larry Sangoma. Let's talk to New Larry. You've been running with New Larry for about six months now. He's a combat mage with a bad tattoo and a bad attitude. No, you're supposed to end up with a bad tattoo and an even worse attitude, but whatever. He knew Dowd almost as well as you did. Dowd. Never saw anybody die like that before. Idiot. He shakes his head. I hate this fragging city. Baconator. No. <laughs> Sorry, there's a comment. There. I hate this fragging city, Baconator. It's wet and the rain feels like acid and I want out of here. Shut your screamer about the rain. We lost a man tonight. Soka. Sorry. I'm just really ready to go home. Portland's way more my speed. I don't know, Baconator. Sam's a good guy and can hold his own in a fight, but he's been hitting the bottle pretty good lately. Never on a run so far, but he needs watching. He shakes his head. That run went sideways. Nine ways to Sunday. Now the fixer's late. Uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. Bastard better show. We need the money. I want to get paid as much as you, buddy. But we need to live long enough to actually drink the new yen we earn. Uh, I don't know what I'm... This, this game's going to have a tremendous amount of reading, it seems like. Um, I'm not going to do any sort of voices because that's going to be absolute hell. Cut the dreck, Sam. We both know why Dowd went down, and it wasn't the fixer, some other paranoid chip dream of yours. Sam smiles a toothy smile. I've been waiting for this all night. New Larry has something he wants to say. Don't you, Larry? Go ahead, spill it. You were sloppy. <laughs> sloppy? If I was sloppy, you've been twitchy all day, son. Look at your hands. They shaking. Uh, Is that true, Sam? Did you miss a beat back there? No, Baconator, I didn't miss a beat. I was on my game the whole time. Remember, I was on point. Knew Larry was supposed to cover Dowd. Something dawns on him. He leans into New Larry, amused and dangerous. We were set up, and he knows it, don't you, Larry? What was that call you made before we hit Renraku? How come you couldn't geek that guy before he unloaded on Dowd? I've seen you fling a lightning bolt, son. He should have been burnt toast before his gun cleared the holster. New Larry checks his watch, licks his lips, looks over your shoulder at the darkness. He's looking for someone, and it's not the fixer. Okay, I can see where this is going. You chummers are damaged. I'm out. Oh. How much did they pay you to sell us out, Larry? He stops, and a smile slowly appears on his face. Honestly, 
didn't take much. Just enough to get me back to Portland and set up with a Cush Corp job. I'm out of this racket. Ugh. We've got it incoming. New Larry relaxes and throws you a direct eating grin. Looks like my new Ranraku friends are finally here. They're gonna take that hard drive off your corpse, buddy. So this is a combat tutorial, maybe. We should choose our friends more carefully, Baconator. At least we have each other. You'll miss me when I'm gone. Okay, got some funky battle music. You're now in turn-based combat mode. Each character on your team has an action pool. We'll spend these actions on movement, attacks, or using spells and items. Once your team's turn is complete, the enemy to team will move and attack. Additional tutorial information is available from the reference guide, which can be accessed in the upper right corner of your PDA menu. Uh, so let's see. And me. Have a Doberman. Okay, Doberman online. Does it need to be in cover? I don't know. Not fake. Oh, a new Larry is a badman too, yeah. Whatever, this is gonna cover from both New Larry and the Red Ranku. Sankoma, you be our new Larry Eradication Squad. Okay, so this is... Was that the reload time? How many shots before I need to reload? Very tiny baby bit. Okay. We're not going to kill New Larry, I don't think. Ah, 
that chair probably isn't the best cover. Um, I'll go this way and start working on middle area with Baconator. The drone can go this way and pick on this. the best I can do. Oh, I saw something we can pick up over here. Ow. Oh, frick, this thing. No one's gonna die. the shaman does this thing just disappear We can handle that. <laughs> Whew. Sangoma, San Sangoma lowers her gun and eyes Sam. You okay, Sam? Sam's breathing's heavy and he looks shaken. That was a hell of a thing. Uh, you 
You did good, Sam. You were born for this gig, Baconator. Me? Not so much. I think I'm gonna hang it up. Find a nice brothel somewhere. Stay drunk until I croak. What about you? Um... Me? I do this. This is the only life I know. Well, you're a dumbass, and I'll drink to you when you're dead. Oh, uh, who am I kidding? I'm not gonna outlast you. Guess you can drink to me. Alrighty. Oh, you stare at Sam's face on your comm link. Shake off the memory. Focus. I had your back that night, didn't I? Now I'm asking myself, who would care if I die? Who would give a rat's ass? Better or worse, your name's at the top of the list. Maybe it's the only name on the list. So I set up a dead man switch to send you this call. I got a hundred thousand new yen insurance policy, payable when you find who ceased me, who creased me. Alive with a conviction, or in a body bag with a justification. Either works. Contact my law firm, Rogers, Mengard, and McCain, when the job's done. They'll know what to do. Check. The camera swivels to show a well-dressed man sitting next to Sam. <laughs> Pursuant to Mr. Watts' wishes, Rogers, Mengert, and McCain has installed a secure, dedicated phone line, so you may contact us directly when the task is complete. We will send a verific- we will begin a verification process. Note that you must also be on the secure landline to access this number. We will not accept transmissions from comlinks or other devices. Look, Baconator, I've led a dreck life and probably left a dreck corpse. I've hurt people, hurt myself, I don't know. Maybe I just want the last word. Maybe I just want someone to give a crap that I sucked air for a while. What do you say? Uh, doo -doo -doo. Well, my schedule's pretty clear right now. I hope you just said yes. I've got a locator chip slotted in my head these days. If, when my heart stops, it'll activate. That's how you'll find me. See you on the slab. Uh, well, Seattle can't be any worse than this, right? I don't know. Wouldn't bet on that. Oh, okay. Your plane hits the SeaTac tarmac with a, tarmac with a jolt. Welcome to Seattle. The chilly northwest rain obscures your vision as you step onto the tarmac. Before long, you're sitting in the cramped back seat of a cab, following the signal from Sam's locator chip into the heart of the Redmond Barrens. Organ grinders, a legal chop shop for body parts, whether from the living or the dead. If you're hurting bad enough for Nguyen, this is the place to sell a limb or an organ. It's also a good place to dispose of an inconvenient body while making a little cash on the side. This, this franchise is the closest thing the Barons has to a morgue. It seems that this is where Sam Watts' body has ended up. You open the door and are assaulted by the spell of bleach and death. Okay. I'm in the back. Well, I didn't bring my Doberman, so I'm assuming no combat. The smell of death and decomposition wash over you, only slightly masked by the minty fresh, minty fake fresh of industrial grade antiseptic. Uh, before we talk to him, let's, uh, let's scoot around and explore. Oh, a dead body.
Okay, Dresden. Uh, this guy is, looks like a creep. Hovering over the recently departed is a small dwarf whistling a tune. His broad grin says, I love my job. A little more than you'd want or expect from someone with the chop shop trade. As we approach, he looks up with a lopsided grin. There is something kindly in his eyes, though it might just be the stray reflection of chrome and surgical tools. Um, Sorry, didn't expect any visitors at this hour, and some asshole at corporate took my receptionist. What can I do for you, sir? Are you the coroner? I'm John Dresden, the organ grinder's branch manager here. So yeah, that makes me this franchise area's coroner too. And you are? Baconator, I'm here about Sam Watts. His grin fades. And what makes you think I know anything about that? Sam had a locator chip, you see, embedded in his skull. I followed it here. Well, I see. Well, you're right. He was here. Not too many people know about the murder yet, though. The press haven't caught wind of it yet. What with it being all the way out here in the Barrens. So who told you he was dead? Sam's ghost. When his heart stopped, I got sent a recorded message asking me to bring his killer to justice. Guess he had a hunch. The dwarf raises his eyebrows, a smile wiping the suspicion from his face. Once I have to open this. A dead man switch, eh? Fascinating. I was working on him earlier. He's over there. Okay. He's my second Emerald City Ripper victim. The third one was downtown. Ripper, eh? I guess the classics never go out of style. Not my title. That's what. That's just what the Seattle press insists on calling the killer. All I know is that, like the original Jack, our Ripper knows how to handle a scalpel. But this one's even more twisted. He or she always removes an internal organ from the victim. Mm-mm. Delicious, a trophy hunter. What was it? Oh, it's Noah <laughs> from the last game. Watch the liver was cleanly cut out. Whiz, what else? The first victim's heart was missing. The third had the spleen removed. Dresden, get out here. I'm here about the new Ripper, Vic. Sam Watts. Ripper Vic, sorry. Okay, picked up my med kit. Sam's body is half covered by a sterile sh surgical sheet. His face an ashen white, for the first time without a smirk on it. Below the chest, there's a small, pencil-thin incision covered in dried blood. Beyond that, the corpse is immaculate. It would seem that the killer knew exactly what they wanted from him, and took it. Next to Sam are several plastic envelopes containing the evidence on his, found on his body. You can, ex you can examine evidence through the bag without spoiling it. Um, let's look at a business card. Moving things around, you can make out that it's a card from a place called the Seamstresses Union. There's something handwritten on the back, but blood has made it illegible. There's also a standard, cheap, unsecured cred stick. No way of knowing what's on it without slotting it. Let's, let's swipe it. Oh, 300 new yen. A purple shirt. It's Sam's shirt. Several of the buttons are missing, and blood has thoroughly soaked it. The bag sloshes a bit in your hand. And there's a note. You can only see part of the note, given the torn off bits and blood stains. Sam, I feel terrible that we are. 
We have been long to say I'm sorry. See you there. Love, Jessica. So Jessica potentially lured him into a tarp. Towering over the diminutive coroner is a homicide detective right out of central casting. If you ignore the tusks, pointed ears, and Neanderthal brow, you can smell his cheap aftershave a mile away. So this, so this new Ripper Vic Watts, name familiar? Didn't his mother kill herself a while back? So you insisted at that time? Come on, she offed herself. I had it on very good authority. <laughs> now let's go, Dresden. Give me something to work with here. The Ripper case is my ticket to a lieutenant's badge. I've already posted everything I know. The killer stuns the target with a combination of drugs and magic, then removes a single organ while they're still alive. The perpetrator's most likely right-handed with a slim hand that knows its way around a scalpel, has a decent understanding of human and metahuman anatomy as well. So I'm looking for a whacked out surgeon. Not necessarily. I don't know any surgeons who still use scalpels anymore. These days, uh, my voice has completely changed. These days, it's all done with computer-controlled lasers. <laughs> Could be anyone, from a military field surgeon to an adequate medicine or antique medicine aficionado. You no damn help, dwarf. The Lone Star Detective finally notices you. You note his superhuman powers of observation. Who the hell are you? Are you the detective on the case? I was hired by Sam Watts to assist you in finding his killer. The dreck you were. You get anywhere near my investigation, it'll be you on the slab, elf. He looks back at the dwarf. Dresden, get me more. I'm putting someone in a cell or a box this week and claiming my promotion. Do you always make friends that easily? I'm great at dinner parties, too. Hmm. <laughs> Be straight with me. You really gonna work for the dead man? Sam was there for me when I needed him. I'm gonna return the favor. Fascinating again. Detective McCluskey isn't interested in anything but M Detective McCluskey. He'd convict his own mother if it meant another ten new yen a week in his paycheck. Plus, he's on the take. Hmm. You have honor, after, after a fashion. I try to honor the dead in my work, so we have that in common. What can I do to help you? On the take, who's paying to hold his leash? I don't know, but someone with some major pull has been looking out for McCluskey's career and wallet. What was that McCluskey said about Sam's mom? The official report is that she committed suicide about a year ago. And you don't buy that? My name's on the report, but my actual findings left some mm, doubts. I can't say that it wasn't suicide, but there were unusual bruises on her upper arms, and she didn't use her dominant hand to pull the trigger. I was told to drop it, so I dropped it. What are organs worth these days? A whole healthy body can be worth a, f a bunch of nuyen, but individual organs? Not worth as much anymore. What with all the synth and cyber stuff on the market these days? Organ grinders only deals in the recently deceased. There's plenty of other chop shops that aren't as picky though, and they don't care where the bodies come from either. Who still uses scalpels? Doctors still learn how to use them in their first year of medical school, as do coroners, but neither profession uses them much anymore. 
It's possible some of the slimier chop shops still use scalpels, I suppose. But I wouldn't know where to look. Have you heard of the Seamstress Union? Seamstress's Union. It's a nearby club in the Barrens that attracts lowlifes. You'd probably love it. Me? I'm not really the going out type. Always too much to be done around here. Plus, the dead are just easier to get along with. I just need to know one more thing. Where was Sam killed? Dresden looks up at you intently for a moment before speaking. I gained two karma. You know, I might be able to do you one better. Why don't you poke around those body lockers in the back and see if you can find anything useful? Um, alright. I'll go do that then. So let's see. Items. Dock wagon, basic trauma kit. Nope, give me this too. Basic mad kit. The cold storage drawer is labeled John Doe, but the internal thermostat is set to 21 degrees Celsius. The cold storage drawer opens to reveal the fully clothed body of a man, arms folded on his chest. In addition to sporting some of the brightest orange hair you've ever seen, the body seems to be in very good condition. Oh. Whoa, easy there, buddy. In one quick move, he jumps down from the drawer and stands before you. For someone who just woke up in a morgue locker, he seems unfazed and pretty well put together. You spot a data jack drilled into his temples, and some shamanistic tattoos peeking above his collar. An interesting combination. I told John to wake me up at 6 in the morning. Is it 6 yet? It doesn't feel like 6 yet. Um, sorry, I didn't expect you to be so alive. Yeah, Dresden thinks he's a pretty funny one. You're not the first person he's pulled on, on, he's pulled this one on. Well, so much for a good night's sleep. On the plus side, I noticed you haven't killed me yet, so that's, that's really good. If you aren't after me, then what's your story? The latest Verper victim, did you know him? Sam, eh? Glad somebody cares. We used to drink together every now and then, over at the Union. Decent enough guy, always in trouble over something or other. John, is this guy cool? Yes, he is on the level. Working for Sam, believe it or not. Some sort of dead man switch. I thought you could help him out. Maybe even stop moping around the shop all day. Thanks for volunteering me. Alright then, name's Jake. And you are? You can just call me Baconator. Nice to meet you. Well, it sounds like you're taking a deep dive here. A dive into the deep end. John's right. I might be able to help you out. I was with Sam the other night, the night of the murder. Poor guy. He was hanging at the seamstresses union that night. Tripped out and rowdy. I'd been laying low here for a few days after a bad run. Miss Kubota asked me to throw Sam out, so I did. But out in the alley, some gangers got the jump on me. <sighs> Damn, maybe I need some soy calf after all. John, could you grab me a cup? Get your own damn cup, my hands are dirty anyways. Now what's wrong with this intestine? <laughs> Thanks John, you're a real pal. Anyway, there's a big fat court bounty on my head. Like I said, my last job didn't exactly go according to plan. Out in the alley, a few Halloweeners got to jump on us. Damn, dang, damn gangers. Thought they could turn a quick profit off my head. <laughs> Sam stumbled off during the fight, though, and that's the last I saw of him, until he turned up here 
dead on arrival. Reminds me about us stay in this place. Uh, great, so you don't know anything about his death. I know they found the body a block away from the Union, just lying there in broad daylight. That's the Barons for you. Hmm. Shame, though. Wish I'd been there if those slagging gangers hadn't come along. Tell you what, you look like you can handle yourself in a fight. I could use some backup to sell the score with those Halloweeners out there. Their leaders got the whole gang searching the Barons for me. I need to get rid of that asshole. In return, I'll take you to the place Sam was murdered. It's not safe to hit the streets alone at night. Trust me. And maybe I'll throw in some decent supplies while we're at it. What do you say? Uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. Let's see. Yeah, I like some street justice. Let's do it. Great. I've been hiding out here ever since that run-in with those Halloweeners. Whiny bunch of gangers. But this stretch of the Barrens is their turf. Hell, I'm surprised you even made it here to this morgue in one piece without packing some heat. Very funny, Jake. You can sleep in the dumpster tomorrow. So, you need a weapon? Um... Yeah, I'll keep my distance. You don't like library windows, do you? Never mind. Here's a rifle you can borrow. So, ready for an evening out on the town? Uh, sure. Tell me more about these gangers first, though. Well, they're one of the nastier gangs in town. Their symbol's a flaming jack-o'-lantern. But you wouldn't like their version of trick-or-treating very much. Around here, they're led by a troll named John Paul. He's got all the Halloweeners and the Barons looking for me. We take him out, maybe I can breathe a little bit easier. Just watch my, watch my back. Don't make me regret this. I'll follow your lead. The Halloweeners aren't looking for you yet. Sweet. We can leave whenever you're ready. Somewhere else we can loot. Okay, let's uh, get out of here. Breaking news, Telestrian CEO. James Telestrian the third to announce new Seattle research division sources say press conference tonight at six Pacific Standard Time. Let's go kill some Halloweenies. Run the Seattle sprawl, and sooner or later, you'll find yourself in the Redmond Barrens. It doesn't matter your business. The Barrens doesn't like you. Take one part radioactive wasteland, three parts dog-eat-dog -dog slum, add a dash of tourist trap, and you've got a recipe for mean as hell. You leave the sanitized death and formaldehyde of organ grinders behind, entering the anarchy and desperation of the streets. Jake stops a moment to breathe deeply, filling his lungs with motorcycle exhaust, radioactive dust, cordite, and who knows what else. He exhales with an expression of wry contentment. The stench and grime tell him he's home. My stash is just around. Uh, I didn't get to really read that. Does the bus stop here? Vlad. Let's 
Sarah. Okay, let's go talk to Vlad. As you approach, the man sizes you up. You can see the age-old flight-or-fight equation running behind his drug-clouded eyes. Beneath the track marks on his arms, you spot a set of tattoos to indicate he is, or at least was, a shaman. Hey man, you okay? Yes! No! Yes! No, I saw something. It's going to kill me! Calm down. I'm Baconator. What's your name? <laughs> my name! My name is... It's Vlad! Hey Vlad, those are some nice tattoos. You a shaman? The word shaman strikes a chord. He seems to shake off some of the mental cobwebs. Yes! Yes, I... I'm a shaman! I thought so, Vlad. What did you see, buddy? See? Yes, I see something! The other night I saw a spirit so dark, so alien, that... <laughs> Where did you see the spirit? Just across the street from the Seamstress's Union. What's well, gone now, Vlad? It's not going to kill you. You're safe. You're safe with me. Thank you. Thank you. I think you're right. I feel better now. More whole. Now I think I need some sleep. Um, that's probably not the voice I should have went for, but that was flawed. Don't go to the market. Let's talk to Sarah. Her clothes may be dirty, but this woman's far from downtrodden. Hey, not that it's my business, but I wouldn't go that way. Why? What's going on? Just some Halloweeners stirring up trouble again. They rode in this morning on those fancy bikes, set up camp in the old street market. They've been marching up and down the street all day, shaking down anyone that wanders past. Typical. Well, odds are those are the guys we're after. Sounds like a friendly bunch. Are there going? Are you going to be safe out there? Ha! Huh. You think I'm dumb enough to get caught out in the open by one of those assholes? Nah, I know these streets like the back of my hand. We're about your own skin. Thanks for the heads up. No sweat, baby. There's a dwarf, there's a whatever this is. Watch out for those gangers. Okay, so that, that's the market. This objective that we had is not the market, it's the alley. Oh, can I go get some sword calf? Looking for a date? Elves are my favorite. I'll pass, lady. Hidden in the garbage strewn alley is a high tech safe with a mag card reader on the front. With a smooth hiss, the safe opens to reveal a collection of gear that is a perfect match for your skills. You take the gear. Oh, a Doberman? Hand over the loop, bozo! Let's, let's do this. Ow. Really? The hell? They're gonna kill me.
guy only has a pistol. No! My robo buddy. My Dogerman. So, welcome to the Barrens. Guess I'll need to find a new spot to hide my gear. Same drunk in every city these days. True, I've been around, but Seattle's still runner's paradise as far as I'm concerned. Now you've got some gear, let's go deal with those Halloweenies. Commerce like a weed is like a weed, taking root in the cracks and crevices of the world whenever it can. A small street market has flourished here amidst the crumbling buildings of the Redmond Barrens. Let's see, do I have an inventory or how do I? Am I still wounded? I am still slightly wounded. But I've got a teeny bit of karma. Do we just want to focus on our drone? Save up the karma. Yeah, okay. It's up to the head, thug. The thug attempts to use his bulk and hideous breath to intimidate the shopkeeper. The old woman's holding fast. But you can see the thug's patience fading, and he looks like he's about to start breaking things. Eh, who the hell are you? Hey, you heard the lady, back off. You think you're tough, I own this block. Back off before your blood ends up all over my nice sidewalk. You know, I'm really sick of gutter punks like you. I knew you were just looking to cause static. Dash, ice this guy. You're freaking dead. Um, okay, so we're just fighting two people. We can do this. Do I have to turn on my drone every... every battle? I cannot thank you enough, Sonny. I hate to see such bloodshed, but those men wouldn't take no for an answer. We simply want to make our way in the world. Please, it's the least we can do. Sweet. 48 million. Amazing. Hey asswipes, take another step forward and we're going to plant you right there. This is Halloweener turf now. Alright. This is one of the two that got away. If I hadn't missed my shot, these idiots would have given up and moved on by now. 
Wait a minute. You're rolling with Jake? Bad idea, chummer. The Halloweeners are collecting that bounty. And killing you? Well, that'll be a nice bonus. Okay. Owie! Okay, so I have a mage. Wait, is this not covered? No, come on. Oh, come on, I just want to get back here. There. Find these barrels. Now, um... Not very good with the right for the scene. these on the ground. Oh no! I'm John Paul. I don't want to just stand next to him. Uncle, I was just playing with you. I'll call off the rest of the Halloweeners, Jake. Call it even, yeah? What? You barely touched him. Then lower your weapon. Walk away. Hold on, Baconator. Think about this. Hey, he can... He can t I want to tell his friends what happened. How naive. Ah well, maybe it'll be worth it to see him running off with his tail between his legs. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, we'll probably have to fight them later. Oh well. Okay, so the murder site's down there. Let's uh, explore a bit. We have Dan the Donut Man, Bobby. The Seamstress Union. Let's look at it. The sounds of laughter and music emanate from within. You should finish your investigation first. One second, I need to look outside. <laughs> Chummer, you got some tasty morsels for you. Just what every well-dressed shadow runner should have in his back pocket. Um, so he has some kamikaze and nitro. Okay, he's got drugs. What about the donut pan? The smell of fried food, powdered sugar, and slightly burned sore calf is almost enough to overpower the dusty sewage stench of Redmond's streets. The, trolls working the, the troll working the stand is covered in food stands, older than he is. What can I get you, chummer? Indeed, they are, Ace. Uh, Hey, Dan, did you see the murder in the alley across the way? No bar was closed when it happened, but hey, it's the Barons. A back alley's a back alley killing's nothing new around here. The only reason the cops are making a big deal about the Ripper business is that some of the victims are real people. You know, folks with sins. <laughs> you could. I don't know how much money I have to spend ten. Yeah, let's, let's spend ten bucks on a jelly donut and a soy calf. Enjoy. I love jelly donuts. So let's see, Sally over here. What are you? Are you a dwarf? Disgusting. The dwarf merchant is packing up her stand for the night. I'm closed. Come back tomorrow. You've got a great view of that alley across the street. Don't suppose you saw the murder that happened here? Hmm. Sure, I was closing up when I heard a series of explosions from behind the Union. A couple seconds later, this guy comes out, runs across the street. Didn't get a good look at him. Then all the lights in the alley exploded all of a sudden. Things got pretty quiet after that. Let me guess, you didn't go running over to see if the guy was okay, right? Hell no. Round here, that kind of thing gets you killed. Okay, thank you for your time. I just like glazed donuts. 
not a fan of filled donuts as much. William. Okay. Oh. As you approach the scene of Sam's murder, Jake spies the flashing red and blue lights up ahead. Whoa, hold on a minute. Lone Star isn't above collecting on a corp-issued bounty, and the one on my head isn't going away anytime soon. <sighs> Sorry, friend. I think this is where our paths diverge. Thanks again for help with those Halloweeners. Here's your payment. They don't take new end where I'm going, and you look like you could use the funds. Um, likewise, Jake. Give me a call when you're in the clear. Yeah, sure. One more thing, though. When you're done checking out your pal's crime scene, Pop into the seamstress's union. It's just down the street. You need gear, information, or just a damn stiff drink? That's the place to be. Best dive this side of Chicago. I used that place as a base of operations for years back in the day. Make the right friends there, and I'm sure you'll get to the bottom of this ripper business. When well, nice knowing you. Like, you, you couldn't figure out how to, like, literally how to get through the room? Like, was it a maze or something? Or you you just kept dying in, like, a, a combat? I'll go talk to William about my good friend's death. The bright yellow police tape cuts through the darkness, directing your eyes to the white chalk outline and dark red stain marking the slab of pavement where Sam Watts died. Standing at the entrance of the alley is a Lone Star officer. The cop looks cold, hungry, and irritated at the homeless man who is currently pestering him. I keep telling you, I need to get my stuff from the alley or I'm going to die in the cold tonight. Yeah, and I've been trying to explain to you that this is an official Lone Star investigation and I can't let anyone in here. Hey, I, I got rights. Look, you sinless garbage. I've got a job to do. Find a new blanket or I'll find a reason to use my stun baton. Typical, I, I hate all you pigs. William, stop running. Oh, I could give him the donut. Or I could just, uh... Yeah, let's, let's lie. I want to eat the donut myself. What, they didn't radio you? Damn, operator's probably asleep again. I'm here to take over your shift. You can head back to base. Yeah, well, where's your uniform? Come on, clearly I'm not with the star. Private security contractor, temporary assignment. Sounds like your boss is short a few guys this week. Yeah, but we have been spread pretty thin lately. Anyway, it's it's about fragging time someone showed up. Thanks for the relief. The streets have not been kind to this man, but they've also hardened him. This man's clearly a survivor the one wrestling with the onset of age and arthritis. You, I saw you over there with that rat bastard cop. What do you want? Oh, you look hungry. Want a hot soy calf and a jelly-filled donut? Oh. I'm, I'm homeless, not helpless. Thank you, but no thanks. I remember the old days, the taste of real coffee. And let me tell you, that dreck, that's not real coffee. Back in my day, you see, we had real coffee. <laughs> Knowing about the murder that took place? Hmm. Are, are you a copper or, or working for some, some corp? Nah. 
Nah, I'm just a freelancer. I need to ask you some questions. Good, I never tell those cops and salarymen nothing. What do you want to know? So, sounds like you live in this alley? Sure, for, for the last couple of months I've been sleeping here, but I spend my days out doing odd jobs for the street merchants or panhandling tourists over near the seamstress union. Did you see the murder? No, and, and I can't say I'm sorry I missed it. I was hauling crates for Miss James up at the market. Can't carry as many as I used to, so it, it took a while. Got back here in time to see a couple of tourists poking all over my home turf. By then, that jerk face in the uniform had already set up shop in my alley. Did you see anything else that night? Um, well, you know, earlier in the night I did see a big and ugly troll in green hospital scrubs snooping around the block. He bought some donuts and two cups of soy calf off a of Dan over there. Seemed nervous, and he did everything with his left hand because his right was all screwed up with some sort of cyberware. Can you tell me more about this cyberware? Well, it was it was big, and I think it must have had some hospital attachments because I saw some needles. It was a lot like the one I saw back in 44, when I got captured by elves. They did all sorts of experiments on me. Let me tell you, never trusted one of them cyber people. That's all I needed to know. Damn cyber people. You miss the shards of glass from the broken lights. You find a small piece of glass, which looks like the bottom of a test tube. There are two distinct sets of footprints. A human's ending at the chalk outline, and a larger set, possibly orc or troll, following behind the first. This work light is new. You can see that all of the alley's normal lights have been ruined. Upon closer inspection, it seems that they've all imploded, as if some force shattered them all at the very same time. This looks like the coat and blanket that the old man was trying to get back. Let's pick them up. As you pick up the bundle of cloth, a printed receipt falls out from beneath the folds of the blanket. It's a bar tab receipt from the seamstresses union, dated two days ago at 3.02 a.m., right around the coroner's reported time of death. The customer, Sam Watts. The server's name is listed as Coyote. Let's give this dude his blankets. I think this coat and these blankets belong to you. My my stuff. A mighty decent of ya. Don't see that kind of thing too often out here. Sweet. And yes, gotta love the real coffee is. It's true. Let's, let's go find coyote. Relative to the rest of the Barrens, Touristville is a neon-clothed oasis. At its heart is the Seamstresses Union, housed in an old brownstone building on the corner of Illegal and Opportunity. Bums huddle together, gangers strut the streets, and the occasional salaryman comes slumming. The Union building has been retrofitted, rebuilt, and restored so many times that it's like an aging starlet wearing too much makeup in an attempt to stay young. The wild ivy growing out the gutters adds to this effect. As you enter, the murmur of hushed conversation washes over you. The dive bar denizens raise their heads, take your measure, and go back to their business. This is the kind of place where everyone knows your name, but keeps to themselves. Hopefully they don't keep themselves too much. A hat in time. Eric Mersman, Cherry Bomb. Nerfs. The 
That's not how a coyote does it. The Ripper's a lie. Okay, interesting. Jin Parks. Mr. Kluwa. Nerps! What's a nerp? I don't know. Let's talk to Cherry Bomb. Ch -ch 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 Cherry Bomb. The bartender is a striking elf, sporting a, a perfectly toned body, perfectly pouty lips, and perfectly tapered ears. Her eyes harmonize, save me, and take me in equal measure, hitting just the right notes for the maximum extraction of tips. She looks at you, sees another elf, and smiles big. Hey there! I haven't seen you here before. What can I get you? Something dirty in a clean glass. Ooh, a hard case. I like that. Okay, hard case. I'll get you something stiff. She turns, she starts to turn away when a man with the face of a survivor and the zeal of a convert tugs at her arm, hard. It's clear the two have history. They try to keep their voices low, but the intensity of their conversation makes them easy to overhear. Cherry, you have to listen to me. If you stick around here, you could end up dead, or worse. The Ripper's out there, and he's real. The last killing happened just down the block. And now Coyote's missing. They'll probably find her tomorrow in a dumpster without her head. Come on, Cherry Bomb. Think. Think. I think plenty, Shane. I'm getting a, a freaking d from... A, a, what? A, oh, a, a PH freaking D from UW in neuroprosthetics studying under Ogemins. And, and how am I paying for it? Bartending. Tips. There are faster ways for a baron's girl to earn that kind of scratch, but I'm not taking them. So what do you want from me? I want what you want. A better life. A better world for everyone. The Universal Brotherhood can give you that. I've heard this all before, Shane. This isn't some trick to get us back together. Things are different now. I'm different. The Brotherhood. Cherry Bomb's face is pretty hard. Armored in lipstick and low expectations. The Universal Brothers for other people, Shane. Rich Bellevue types who can afford their membership fees and voluntary donations. This isn't about money. It's about binding the world together in brotherhood. Come with me. Attend a discovery meeting. Get to the core of who you are. I heard Lynn Telestrian give a talk last night called The New Family of the Sixth World. I've got family right here, Shane. They're drunks and lowlifes and whores, but I'd choose them over any of your Brotherhood members. Now, Buzz, I need to get back to work. With body language that leaves no question that the conversation's over, Cherry Bomb turns her back on him. Mm, sorry, hun, I got interrupted. Boyfriend, find religion. Something like that. You've got that look that says that you're not just here for entertainment. Are you a badge? Do I look like a cop? <laughs> no, baby. You look like someone who knows the shadows. We're trained to spot a bronze the minute they walk in here. Something I can help you with? I've got a few questions. I'd like to have them answered immediately. Ask away. Um, that guy mentioned Coyote. Is she here? No, I think she's away on business. Business, huh? Is she a shaman? With a name like Coyote, I just assume this is a shaman. <laughs> no, she shot a coyote once, thinking it was a shaman who double-crossed her. We've been calling her Coyote ever since. She's been missing for a couple of days now. Some people think the Ripper got her, but I know her. Coyote can, can take care of herself. 
You ever hear the name Sam Watts? Yeah, Sam was a regular customer and a regular pain in the ass for as long as I've been here. Talked a big game, but he was always broke. As soon as he got any money in his pocket, it went straight to his head. Chips, drugs, or booze. Coyote had a soft spot for him, though. Did you see Sam on the night he died? No, that was Coyote's shift. Who runs this place? I want to talk to them. Let me talk to your mother. That'd be Miss Kubota. She's in the back room. You can't miss her. Whiz. Nil Sweat. Okay, so she's in the back. Let's talk to Eric Mersman. Whoa, this guy looks nothing like his in-game model. Hey, guy, I got some extra outfits I'm trying to unload. You want first dibs? Sure. So he sells clothes. Got it. The tourist look. So I'm in intelligence class. Oh, the black hat outfit looks really dumb. Oh, why does the tourist look so good? Three armor? And here I was looking at like... Oh, I already have secure record clothing. Which is awful. Oh, should we buy? A, a, sure, I have to, right? This is lovely. <laughs> so we have a Doberman, which is a Class C drone, an AK-97, a bunch of medkits, and a trauma kit. Okay, which is a res. Sweet. Can we sell our old clothes? Okay. Cool. Nerps! Wyvern's Tooth Ale. The Asian woman expression reads, open for business, but her demeanor reads, dealer, rather than companion. She has a jack on her neck, a gun in her hip, and a chip on her shoulder. She eyes you with a sneer. You look like you could use some firepower, something simple. I got guns so smart they practically fire themselves. You looking for tech? Got some of that too, if that's the way you roll. Yeah, do you have... Oh, drone repair kits. I should probably invest in one of those. Uh, we kind of suck with guns. Otherwise, I would buy a goon. Support drone is equipped to lay a smoke trail. That's interesting. Get a machete just as like a backup.
Yeah, okay. Oh, I can't, yeah, I can't equip a third weapon. Oh well. We'll still just have a machete. I love machetes. Oh, this says NERPS as well. NERPS. What are NERPS? So we've got Johnny Clean, Noog, and Klua. Oh, what is this? Like drumming area. I like all the little details. Posted at the doorway to the VIP section is a tower of troll muscle wrapped in an impossibly tailored suit. Whether the product of good genes or expensive aftermarket cosmetic work, the troll's gleaming horns perfectly frame his face, and his polished tusks and goatee accentuate the set of a lantern jaw. Welcome, behave yourself. Will do. You get in, you get trouble in here often. Nothing a stern look can't usually solve. You have business here? Yeah, I was a friend of Sam Watts. You know him? Sure, everyone here knew Sam. Shame to lose a part of the family. There's a sharpness in Clua's eyes. The look of a man who's seen too much and earned wisdom at a young age. I figure Sam was the type who needed to be thrown out on occasion. You ever toss him out on his buttocks? Not so much toss a nudge in his way. He was a drunk, but not usually a violent one. Usually? What about the night he died? He was a bit agitated. Didn't catch the specifics. Might have been over a woman. Thought I was going to have to show him out, but I'd deal with a couple of rival gokangers posturing for one of the working girls upstairs. Jake helps him out instead. Appreciate the talk. Happy to help. Okay. What was this? Mrs. Kubota. What is this dance right here? So. The female dancer has like an actual sexy dancing animation. The male dancer just just does that. I guess he looks slightly deer stretch. How lazy. Yeah. Awesome. Imagine looking at this person dance and just being like, awesome. Let's talk to Johnny. The man's dressed like a janitor, but he's wearing unusually clean overalls. He is tall, rail thin, and has a cunning look in his eyes. Says he's more than just the maintenance man. Howdy, name's Johnny Clean. You knew? I am. I imagine you've seen all sorts of things in a place like this, eh? That's true, quite true. And I keep my mouth shut about it, too. That's the secret to keeping a job here and staying alive in general. Gotta work. See you around, buddy. Do you have a love potion? Wait, so this guy sells, like, magical stuff, maybe. Ugh. 
covered in glowing magical talismans and fetishes, the troll does not seem to fully be of this world. He mumbles to himself constantly, apparently participating in several conversations at once, but with entities you can neither see nor hear. I, I told you it's not like that at all. Bring me proof, and you shall have it. I'm honored, your majesty. That was why I said to use mustard instead of catsup. Forgive me, Jean. I was a fool. He looks you in the eye, his other conversations on hold. You may peruse my magical wares and see their glory. Sure. I don't want anything magical, though. I'm a no magic person. All I need is my Doberman and a rifle. Mrs. Kubota watches you cross the room, sizing you up as you approach. As you get closer, you can see that she is of mixed race, African and Japanese. Her demeanor says, This is my house. Mess with it at your peril. But her eyes twinkle with a playful light when she speaks. Kanbanwa, good evening! <laughs> My, but aren't you the pretty elf? Are you enjoying the seamstress's union? There should be plenty for a man like you to enjoy. She eyes you closely. Or is this business? <laughs> it's, it's business. I suspected as much when you walked in, no oh my. What business do you have with me? I'm looking for information. Of course you are. Knowledge is power. New so base until... 42 is now following. Wow, someone someone listened to that and then started following. I'm sorry. But thank you, Nubasaur. <laughs> Suka, and why should I help you? Sam Watts, I'm looking for his killer. Ah, so you are the little insurance policy he would go on about when he was drunk. His avenging angel who would strike back for him from the beyond the grave. What do you want to know? Uh, t -t 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 did you see Sam on the night of his death? He was here, quite inebriated, as he often was. Coyote was working the bar that night, and she informed me that Sam was getting rowdy and belligerent with the other customers. When I requested he leave, he refused. My bouncer, Mr. Kluwer, was off dealing with another issue, so I requested that Jake escort him out the back alley. That was the last I saw of either one. One more question. Can you tell me where to find Coyote? Would that I could. I have not seen her in two days. She's a smart woman and quite dangerous, but I fear for her. If she's smart, why fear for her? Because she's in a dangerous line of work, and there's always someone smarter, more prepared. Her room's upstairs, but if you're looking for her, I invite you to examine it. You might be able to uncover her whereabouts. I would not normally betray her privacy in this way, but she has missed two shifts now, and I can't reach her on her comms. It's unlike her. If something has happened, I'll not have inaction on my conscience. Here's the key. Uh, I'm sorry, I apologize for, for that. I, I don't know what I was doing. Okay, so what can we... There's a locked door. There's a terminal. Two open doors. We've got multiple pictures of the same person. Portraits. That's interesting. There's a mid-grade security panel attached to the nearby door. It's set to require a password for entry. Can I increase my decking real quick? Uh, yes. Free 
increases. Hmm. Yeah, I do want to. Why well, am I even? Does this take up a weapon slot? Because if it does, then it's gonna be real hard to carry this and a drone. And when I get one. You know what, let's just get two. It's useful for hacking. Let's see. Let's increase our intelligence by one. And drone control. Hopefully that was not a mistake. Let's hack it. Did that work? Oh, it did. Oh, I thought we were going to like read something, not not just open the store. Okay. It's a bear. A toilet that looks just like my bathroom did. The stuffed bear seems to be hiding something. Okay. Did people really do their laundry in this universe in like these old like tubs? There aren't even like cheap laundromats or something they can just take their clothing to? Like, I'm all for anachronism, but that's very strange. What's up here? Looks like Coyote, Coyote keeps her clothes on boxes on the floor. Okay, yeah, I mean, I guess when this is a place where people don't even have dressers and cabinets. The stand's littered with action movies and cigarette butts. A framed painting of Chicago skyline, skyline done in a stylized silhouette. Carrie's bed has a diary with several papers sticking out of it. Sure. There's a seat stuck between the pages and the diary entry. Uh, let's, let's read her diary. We're rude like that. I came back from my ship to find four of Paco's goons sleeping on our apartment floor. It's getting fragging ridiculous. I want to be with him, with the real Paco, but this cutter dreck keeps messing everything up. I love him, but he's totally different with the gang. It's how I make cash, baby, he always says. I try to tell him he doesn't need the cash. I can support us both with what I make at the seamstresses union. But he still goes on these runs. With these bozos all over my floor, I feel like he's just seeing how far he can push me before I kick him out. I try to be patient, but why does it have to be all one way? As soon as the last cutter was at the door, I lost it. I told him if he ever pulled Drek like that again, that he would be sleeping with the fishes in the alley. Of course, he begged and pleaded with me, telling me it wouldn't happen again. I don't want to deal with this anymore. I don't want him to leave. He's the reason I got through all that stuff last year. Got my bartending license, got this apartment, and this life. I know he cares about me and loves me. More than his involvement with the Cutters, I just wish I could slice out that gang from our life together. Slice out the fear that comes along with it. A receipt for a Browning Max Power Pistol from Jin Park. And a note saying how big guns on hot women turn her on. All right. This paper has a handwritten poem on it and a diary entry. Sometimes it seems like Paco reads my mind or my diary. Maybe he does the latter. I wouldn't be surprised. Hi, Paco. Ever since last week, he hasn't mentioned the cutters once. He leaves the apartment with a, see you in a few hours, babe, and returns later without comment. 
I don't know if he's really going to help. Oh, I don't know if it's really going to help for us to avoid the subject in our conversation completely. But I have felt better without our constant arguing about it. The last two nights, I've come home from work to Paco waiting up for me, slouching on the old dumpster couch with a novel four inches from his face. I imagine that as I turn the key to the door, he perks up and makes himself look especially studious for when I get the door open. He seems superficially surprised to see me, but I love this little act. Uh, okay, so there's a horrible poem from Paco. There's a receipt and an old photograph. Let's look at the picture. The picture shows a young girl with caramel skin and dark brown hair. She has a snake wrapped around her arm, yet she's smiling. The back of the photograph has shadow scrawled on it. A COD receipt for a special order. Five pounds of zebra meat from Moria's Meat Emporium, located near Pike Place Market. Okay, so they can't properly buy, like, laundry and clothes washing equipment, but they can buy five pounds of zebra meat. What a world. A receipt for a wall safe installed near the bathroom door, set to a combination of 342436. 342436. All right. Sure, put in the code. The safe beeps cheerfully in response to the, and the door comes open. Boop! I don't have room. We don't need one of these mad kids. Because computer's ancient, probably fished it out of a junkyard. It doesn't even have a data jack, and the cracked display is covered with fingerprints. Tapping the keyboard causes dust-caked fans to spin up, only to display on screen, password? Without the password, the only other button on the screen is a password recovery option. Oh. Crap, let's try. I don't know, let's get the stuff off the bed. What is, what is on the bed? Oh, that's just the diary. Sure, password recovery. Your first childhood pet. Shadow? Favorite musical act. Oh. What the hell, like I know. Crap. Crap, did it say somewhere in here? Okay, so snake is shadow. I think that we answered that correctly. Slurred with action movies and cigarette buzz. Hmm. Let's talk to Jin real quick, maybe. Oh, 
Oh, she moved. Can you tell me about this pistol? Need some hardware? Do you sell a Browning Max Power to Coyote, the bartender? Hey, guy, I'm discreet. I don't talk about what my clients about what my what I don't talk about what my clients or what they buy okay bad for bids however I'm sure she would recommend me if she was a customer which I'm not saying she is of course I'd expect no less listen Coyote's missing and Miss Kubota asked me to find her I need to know whatever you know whatever Miss Kubota wants I didn't realize Coyote was missing. She said she was expected to encounter some kind of paranormal animal at close range. I recommended the area's predator, but she couldn't afford it, so she went with the Browning Power Ma Max. That's enough. I need to know what sort of music she listens to. Do you know if Coyote had a favorite band? Indeed I do! She plays her Starfire records so loud you can hear them down here! I've told Mr. Clue where is it? we have to turn that dreck down more than once. I can't even talk anymore! Starfire. She listens to Starfire. Do -do 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 -do. What other questions will there be? Oh. Shadow. Starfire. Let's just go with Chicago. Your password's been reset to NQPABDST for security. Never write down your password. Calendar. Three days ago, meet with Delilah about gig. Today, meet Paco for date at Pike Place Market. Due in 30 minutes. Cody's contact list has exactly one entry, someone named Paco. There's no comlink number or other contact information for him available. This does not seem like a very useful list of contacts. A quick scan of her recent searches so that Coyote has been reading a great deal about hellhounds. It also suggests more than a casual interest in vintage action figures. So the zebra meat is for the hellhounds. Okay. That explains it. Let's go to the Pike Place Market. Where's the way out? How do I get out of here? It says I did, but... Okay, I can't leave. There must be something else I need to do. Do you know Paco? He's a ganger! A member of the Cutters! He's a, 
Good is a good kid in a nasty line of work. I warned Coyote against getting too attached to that type. They don't live long, you know. Cody has a date with Paco at Pike Place Market in the next half hour. If you'd go down there, it might bring me peace of mind. I'll call a cab for you. It should be able to get you there in time. Gambate kudasai. Good luck. I find it a little bit weird that when I first talked to her, the very first thing that my character noticed was that she's of mixed race. Pike Place Market. You catch a tab. Uh, you catch a cab from Touristville to Pike Place Market in a mercifully quiet ride that takes you from probably going to be mugged to probably going to pay too much for your drinks. Compared to the urban wasteland of the Barrens, the downtown area is filled with modern buildings, lighted streets, and unbarred shops, all living beneath the shadows of massive corporate arcologies. For many, these arcologies are home. For others, they're hulking monuments to where the world went wrong. Famous for its fishmongers, Pike Place Market has been around since the early 1900s, overlooking the bay. Now it's a market for all things, legal and illegal, a melting pot of the haves and have-nots. Even though most of the shops are closed, the sights, sounds, and smells of the market hit you from the moment you step out of the cab. I have to look for a delivery at my door. It's here. Like this mark. Okay, so we have Patrick at the Universal Brotherhood. Talk to Patrick. The handsome young man turns away from the crowd and fixes you with his full, completely undivided attention. Sir, you're a beautiful elf, but you could be so much more. That sounds great. Tell me more. Wonderful. The Universal Brotherhood is a family encompassing all metahumans, sexes, and sexualities. We all strive to be the very best we can, to live more fulfilled, happy, and productive lives, and to support each other in doing so. The first step is to simply come and listen. Tomorrow night, Lynn Telestrian will be speaking about the importance of family in the sixth world. 
please join us tomorrow, and the secrets to a better life shall be revealed to you. He smiles and turns back to the crowd. What was this say? Tiddly Bits Junk Shop. Refurbished flowers for sale. Synth juice for sale, just fab today. sure if I got everything that I actually ordered on my order. Oh, okay. One of the items was out of stock, so they did not deliver it. Uh, so Paco's over here. He's got a bat. Nerps! What are nerps? Where do we go? Well, I mean, I'm sure we're supposed to go talk to... I got dog on a stick here! I'm sure we're supposed to go talk to Paco, but... Oh, it's the Meat Emporium! Officer Landers. Okay, let's talk to Paco first. Hey, Paco! Hey, seen my friend around? Tall lady, dreads. So Coyote has dreads? Alright. Why next to Maclar's vegetable stand is there, like, a weird-looking pig thing? The kid in front of you sports the trademark yellow of the Cutters Gang. Young, clean-shaven, he stands like he owns the street and everyone on it. He seems distracted, though, glancing around with increasing agitation. He looks over you as you approach. Hey, watch yourself, dandelion eater. What do you want? Careful, kid, you Paco. What the? Who the hell are you? I'm Baconator. I'm looking for Coyote. I need to ask her some questions. I don't know. We should, um... Yeah. And you need to tell me why you think that's my problem. I'm not her boss. Find her yourself. I was just at the Union. She's missed two shifts, and Miss Kubota hasn't been able to reach her on her comm. The tough guy's swagger seems to drain out of Paco. The cutter's gone, and before you stands a kid in a yellow jacket that doesn't quite fit. Coyote's missing? Oh man, that would explain. She was supposed to meet me here over an hour ago. Look, sorry for getting in your face like that. What else do you know? If she's missing, I need to find her. Ever heard of a place called Mori's Meat Market? Cody had her seat for some zebra meat from there. What, you've been rummaging through her stuff? Yeah, that shop's just down the block. What the hell would she need zebra meat for, though? Beats me. Do you know a fixer named Mr. Delilah? Coyote had a meeting with him a few days ago. Yeah, I know him, sure. Bleak doesn't allow any cutters to take side gigs, gigs though. So I got no reason to deal with him. Coyote hasn't said anything about taking new work. Wait a minute. Drek, I, I knew where she... I know where she went. Damn, why couldn't she wait? Damn it. Paco, slow down. Where'd she go? The Royale Apartments. The landlord, Stevie J. He runs a drug ring out of that hellhole. 
Coyote grew up there, doesn't like to talk about it much. She's been looking for a way to settle the score with that guy for years. A few days back, I heard Mr. Delilah was looking for runners to steal some sort of item out from under Stevie J's nose. She must have taken the job, I'm sure of it. And if his thugs caught her, mm, I'm, I'm going over there. You coming? I'm in. Don't worry. We'll get her back. Damn right we will. Cool. Where are the Royale apartments? Where is objective marker? I don't know. Let's talk to Manny at the Meat Emporium. The small meat stand presents it's a huge meat stand. The small meat stand presents an enormous diversity of dead animals, from cow and canine to the exotic and paranormal. The pictures on the back of the stand feature a much older version of the man in front of you. As soon as he notices Paco, the proprietor's eyes become hard and angry. What do you want? You know we can't afford more. Relax, man. My friend just has a question. You must be Mori. Do I look like a fat old man to you? I'm Manny. Mori is my dad. What do you want? What would someone buy zebra meat for? Oh, I have this receipt for an order of zebra. Sure. Let's try and get zebra meat. Yeah, I'll look it up. Yeah, I got it right here. Two days past the pickup time. Didn't think anyone was going to come for it. Here, it's all yours now. What's someone want to buy zebra meat for? Well, some people eat it. But I wouldn't recommend that. Tough as nails. We mostly sell it to corp security teams who use it to reward their hellhounds. The flamers go crazy for the stuff for some reason. Oh, Drek. That's why Coyote wanted zebra meat. Everyone talks about the pet hellhound Stevie J keeps locked up somewhere at the Royale. If she never picked it up. Whatever. Anything else? Uh, what's your problem with Paco? Why don't you ask him? What the hell is that supposed to mean? It means your gang likes to stroll through here and relieve us merchants of our new yen. My dad stood up to them and he's still in the hospital. Look, that's not my problem. I'm at the bottom of the cutter ranks anyways. I couldn't do Drek about that even if I wanted to. Tell it to my dad. I don't have time for this. We need to find Coyote. Uh, sure. Let's get going. Oh, that's a cool bit of wall art. As your eyes adjust to the flashing lights, you spot the body of a woman dead on the pavement behind the poli police line. Panic spreads across Paco's face. Oh no, oh no, is that Coyote? This ain't happening, god damn it. Paco, breathe. Take a closer look, is that her? Paco steps forward and breathes a huge sigh of relief. No, no it's not her, thank god. Look, let's not hang around here too long, alright? Too many Lone Star pigs around. It's too bad. Whatever happened here, I'm not gonna let anything like this happen to Coyote. Okay, let's, uh, we'll talk to the pigs. Another Ripper murder. Oh. Oh. A tall, emotionless Lone Star officer blocks entry to the crime scene. Behind her, you spot the lively face of the organ grinder, Corander, Dresden. This is, an, this is an active Lone Star investigation. Please step away from the bar barrier. Detective Baconator, Auburn Precinct. We have reason to believe the victim may have been involved in an illegal BTL smuggling ring we're investigating. I'd like to examine her belongings for evidence. Badge and sin, please. It's all right, officer. He is with me. 
Okay then, make it quick. Lying on the pavement is the body of a young human female. Her eyes have been gouged cleanly out. And you notice a string of bite marks along her left arm. So, what brings you out here? Hot on the trail of the dead man's killer? Hardly. Is she another ripper victim? Yes, that's what it looks like. As you can see, the ripper went for her eyes this time. Pretty clean work, I got to hand it to him. Our ripper knows what he's doing. Or she, I suppose. Hmm. Any sign of magic use here? There was evidence of an unusual explosion in the alley where Sam died. Now there's an interesting thought. No, nothing obvious, though. I'm sure when McCluskey shows up, he'll call on a full magical forensics team, though. Just to be sure. Can you tell if she was subdued in some way before her eyes were removed? That's the strange thing. There don't seem to be any signs of a struggle, not a single bruise on her body. Yet she was clearly alive when the eyes were taken. Died of blood loss shortly thereafter. That's what knocked her out. I wouldn't know until I can run some tests back at the lab. What about the bite marks? Ah, completely unrelated. It appears some wild dogs dragged the body out of here from the alley some time after her death. So the Ripper takes Sam's liver and this woman's eyes. Any theories? Trophies of some sort, I suppose. Probably of some symbolic significance to the killer. Beyond that, I couldn't speculate. Uh, what do you know about them? Not much. She has been dead for about three hours. Her name was Lucy Warden. Worked at the stuffer shack just around the corner. Looks like she was just leaving work when it happened. That's enough. Hey, I figure if I help you out, there's a better chance to get this scumbag off the streets a little sooner. McCluskey wants the Ripper in a cell, sure, but he couldn't care less if it takes another dozen murders. Good luck out, out there, eh? Well, speaking of McCluskey, you should probably get going soon before he shows up. Oh, let's speak to the student. Plain clothes Lone Star before you sports a tacky hat and a crooked grin to match. So you're the one who was working for the dead man, eh? McCluskey warned us you might be sniffing around after the Ripper. Lucky for you, I got here before McCluskey. I'm Officer Ag Ag Aguirre. I don't know how to pronounce my own name. Pleased to meet you. Now seeing as this crime scene's going nowhere fast, what can I do for you? Uh... I take it you and McCluskey don't exactly see eye to eye. Let's just say McCluskey and I, we have, uh, you know, conflicting interests. Any leads on the Ripper I should know about? Ha, huh, plenty, if you ask McCluskey. But the truth is, we're as clueless as you probably are. Oh yeah, this guy is, uh, useless. Thanks for your time. Hey, hold on a minute there. You haven't put in a donation for the Lonely Orphans Fund. The Lonely Orphans Fund? Yeah, you see, you make a contribution to the next fund, I put you on a list and let you know the next time we find any, you know, orphans you might be interested in. Well, I'm always interested in finding out about any new orphans you discover. Excellent. Shall we say 300 million? Excellent. I'll start an account for you. We get any useful new leads on the Ripper, I'll give you a call. Now I better be back to work before McCluskey shows up. See you around. Let me know any have any, any new orphans. Gotta love the orphans. Wanna buy some BTL? 
god, god. <laughs> it's like a BLT, but you make it in the wrong order. Glad there's no trolls around here. I sure hate trolls. Uh, so I take it this is the rail. A junkie and Frank. No way, blind Lucy? Work before you, where's the standard stuffer shack employee get up? Uniform's well kept and well fitted, but the tears streaming down his large, crooked face do little to improve his appearance. He doesn't seem to notice you approach. I take it you knew the victim? Yeah, yeah, what's it to you? My condolences, were the two of you close? Thanks, sorry, we're just not used to folks being so friendly around here. The orc wipes some tears away with a dirty napkin. Yeah, yeah, we, we were pretty close. As, as co-workers go, Blind Lucy and I worked here at the shack for three years together. Started on the very same day. When was the last time you saw Lucy? Here at the shack earlier today, I, I think she was heading to the market to meet a friend. Hell, I was going to join her on my way home. But we got some last last minute customers. Did you have any animals and enemies? Well, well, I'm not I'm not sure. I know she had an, an ugly breakup with her boyfriend after getting those new eyes put in. That guy was pretty upset for some reason and and wouldn't leave Lucy B until she filed for a restraining order. That all seemed to die down a while ago though. See anyone strange lately? I see weird stuff every day. It's a stuffer shack. But no, nothing stranger than usual. But Lucy wasn't completely blind, but she was legally blind. She had to wear these huge glasses and hold things right up to her face. But she got new eyes about a year ago. Okay, so maybe it's just cybernetic organs being stolen? Any idea how she scored the new eyes? No, no, she wouldn't talk much about it. Just called it her stroke of good luck. I, I guess that luck ran out. That's all I need to know. Thanks for your help. Sorry about your loss. Wait, y you wouldn't be part of the investigation, would you? I am in my own way. Why do you ask? Well, Lucy, she, she had this necklace. An intricate little carving of a, a dragonfly on it. Wore it every day. Said her mom gave it to her when she was in Denver. Anyway, you know how, how Lone Star is. All of her stuff will be bagged and placed in evidence until the seventh world awakens. I just thought... Well, I just thought you could somehow get that necklace back before Lone Star cleans everything up. I could send it back to her family. I feel like I owe her that much. Okay. Let's see if we can. Maybe a a guir a guire, I don't know. We'll give it to us. Aguire. Officer Aguire. Oh, who is this? Who's this rancid looking elf? You scan the ground near body or near Lucy's body. Spot a small wooden object, mostly hidden beneath the dead woman's hair. This must be the necklace Frank was talking about. A thin, broken cord trails off to one side. It must have snapped during the struggle. Hey, hello again. Can I help you? I need to take the victim's necklace with me. It may help in my investigation. Well, if it'll help you, that means it won't be helping McCluskey. He reaches down, picks up the necklace, and hands it to me. Thanks, officer. Yeah, sure thing. Good luck out there. Let's talk to this fucking elf. Yo, what up, my dude? 
The elf standing before you may quite possibly be the ugliest elf you've ever seen. His meticulously clean lab coat, formal format jacket, format jacket, and old-fashioned bow tie give him the look of an undertaker from centuries past. He notices you approach and locks eyes with you, smiling a thin, unnerving smile. Why, hello there, stranger. Might I inquire, do you know which organ grinder's facility this body will be removed to? Who's asking? <laughs> oh, I'm no one of consequence. Never mind that, though. Good evening to you and your friend, the coroner. What? And then he just runs away. Need something else? Any fascinating new leads? Did you notice a particularly ugly elf standing over there earlier? Hmm, where? He's gone now, but he was asking about the body, wondering which organ grinder's facility it will be taken to. Interesting. Well, there's those who might be interested in purchasing some of her parts, sure. But that's pretty poor form to inquire at the site of a murder. An ugly elf, eh? I'll keep an eye out. Shouldn't be too hard to spot if he comes back. Yeah, end time. Cool, let's go. Let's go. necklace or her necklace where were you able to find Lucy's necklace I've got it right here Frank you can send this to her family I'm glad I can do this much for Lucy at least thank you friend I truly owe you just make sure that gets to Lucy's family I don't want it turning up on some Lone Star office with my prints on it Hey guy, you have any extra nuyen? Just need some sucro zoom from the shack over there. Sure, I have ten nuyen. Nutrisoy cakes will fill you up for longer. Thanks, chummer. I don't know why we're giving money to junkies who are holding rifles, but. Hey, come on, guy. Let's let's go find Coyote. Yeah. Let's do it. The Royale Apartments. You roll up on the most impressive bit of tenement squalor you've seen in a long time. There's few st street lamps here, and what light there is flickers with uncertainty. Most of the buildings are damaged and tagged. The smell of old, rotting trash mixed with you don't want to know, is overwhelming. It's no wonder people living here turn to BTLs. Anything better than this. The Better Than Life chip is the newest drug on the market. You don't need a good life. You can slot someone else's, live through them, and wreck your brain in the process. The front doors of the Royale Apartments aren't even locked. As you step inside, you can hear a junkie crying for another hit. It's time to find Coyote find out what she knows about the night of Sam's murder. Hey, the Royal Apartments, what a hole. I can't imagine what it was like for Coyote growing up here. A hellhole full of junkies. Looks like Stevie J gets the rent money and their drug money. If Coyote's here, we'll have to hurry. She's good, but well... These BTL guys pay to stay well informed. They may have known she was coming. Um, tweaker 
sad old man. Stay hey, you. The woman scratches herself like a cat at a couch leg. Please, can you spare some Nugan? My creds, uh. You've got a stink on you, junkie. Drop the chips, get clean. Hey, we can't all be like you. Please, I just need one BTL to get through the day. Two tops. What do you say? That doesn't sound like a good idea. Have you seen a woman that came through today, armed and looking for trouble? Yeah, no! Hell, what do you want me to say? I'll tell you anything, everything, please. She drops her knees, pleading. I'm sorry, but I can't help you. You should leave this place, if you can. But, but that doesn't make sense. The BTLs are here. I just need something. She collapses, whimpering, and seems lost to this world. Okay, we'll talk to the sad old man in a second. Okay, we're right now. Like a lazy pigeon, he watches you approach. You're not from around here, are ya? I don't want any trouble. Uh, easy, Gramps. I'm just looking for information, then I'm gone. Bad day to come around here unexpected. Bit of a commotion upstairs. Stevie's men are twitchy. This pretty young thing came through here earlier, snooping around like you two are. I could tell she weren't here for BTLs. I don't know how she got upstairs, but there's a lot more gunfire than there usually is this time of day. That's not good. Did you see her come back down again? Nope. A couple of Stevie's men came around, asking what anyone saw. Kept my mouth shut, I did. Uh, wh where's Stevie hold up? He's got the whole top floor to himself. Fancies he's king around here. Sounds like coyotes around the one sideways. Hey, old man, you know how to get upstairs? You've been right friendly, but I can't get in the wrong side of Stevie J. I'm sure you understand. Okay. My charisma is just not enough. Maybe I should increase it. Become a more charismatic person. I'm a shadow runner security person. Sure. What does this do for me? Able to put two drones. Well, I, I don't need that right now. I think I'd like at least four quickness actually as well. I can't talk to this guy again now, right? Yeah, I don't know. There's a hole in the wall. Okay. The wall's crumbling here. Through a hole, you can see a rickety stairwell.
Your drone fits through the hole. Snakes to the right and back around to open the apartment door from the inside. How wooed! Everyone has the same bathroom. Once we go upstairs, I'm not leaving until I find Coyote or I'm dead. You get it? Uh, okay, I'm not ready to head upstairs yet. Let's, let's keep exploring. Stop your pleading. Your boy has debts and we're collecting. <laughs> it's a sim. Please, Riker. No, he's my son. Whoa. Get your ass back in your squat before I break something else. I'll send him upstairs instead. You want me to give him to Stevie? Maybe after he kills that girl we caught. You pig. Give Zipper back now, or... Or what? You'll bleed on me? Zipper's gone. Get yourself a new kid. Oh god, no, please, no! Okay. Oh. Oh. What is Nitro? I don't even know. This is my home. Get out. What is that all about? Why do you care? It's... It's my son. That bastard took my son. Who took your son? One of Stevie J's goons, Riker. He runs that filthy BTL squad across the hall. My son, Zipper. He's not a strong boy, and Riker knows it. Lured him in with those damn chips. Better than life. Ah, oh, what life? And now they're torturing him in there. Why would they do that? Those sickos have a SimSense recording studio over there. Overheard them say they have a special guest up in the penthouse. They plan to torture her with a recording of my son's dying breath. That must be Coyote. They've got her up there. Keep it together, Paco. She's still alive. Stay frosty, gentlemen. Yeah, you're right. I'll be okay. What about my son? See if I can save your son while we're saving our friend. An elevator gleams. Whoa. BTL junkies twitch in the throes of their sordid dreams. At least as long as the creds are good. Am um, I gonna have to fight these folks? Yeah, I should probably come in from the other side. Hey, don't touch that. Yeah, we're gonna have to fight. Haven't seen you before. Looking to go somewhere special? A scream echoes through the pipes of the rotten walls. Hard to tell where it came from. Heard you're in the middle of a recording session. Sure am. My gear's stay of the art if you can believe. I'm looking for something special, very special, something violent, something stinky and chewy. Look around, clearly. I'm not going to be offended by any idea you can come up with. I want to kill someone and record it. 
Wow, you're one sick bastard. I like it. Perfect timing, too. I could use a trigger man for a little project they've got going. Come with me. Tickler? Who's this, Riker? Can't you see I'm busy here? This guy, he has exotic tastes. He wants to help us out, and he's willing to pay for the privilege. That and a copy of the recording. Well, as, as, as long as Mr. J gets what he needs, I see no reason we can't make a little extra at the same time. I think young Zipper here is just about spent. Now, just give me a moment to hook up a recording rig to our little friend here, and we'll have quite the BTO for his personal collection. That's enough. Time for you to bleed. So, we have Riker and Tickler. Are these zombies going to do it? I hope not. for a while. It's about to get messy around here, yeah. Oof, I don't think I can move. Can you at least tell my dad? Sure. I got a BTO. After they have like a bad trip, they'll not want to do BTLs anymore. I don't know. I don't know if that's how it works. Okay. Let's tell the dad. Saved my son yet. Zipper's okay. He's pretty messed up though. I don't know how to thank you. You can just say thanks. Let's do this. Steve. 
Stevie J's penthouse apartment might have been nice at one point in time. Classic, even. But now it's filled with neon tube lighting, broken down furniture, piles of rubbish, and crates containing who knows what. Still, compared to the rest of what you've seen, it's positively palatial. The only thing marring the penthouse's pseudo-luxury is a woman's cry of pain in the distance, followed by laughter. Someone being tortured for another's pleasure. You step deeper into the apartment. I'm gonna get some to drink. This is Paco. Oh, let's move Paco here. Baconator wants to hang out here. the metahumans. These people are into more than just selling the PPLs. Shove the zebra meat through the bars. The room beyond is the bars is a stinking jumble of burned flesh and dog flop. An enormous hellhound, its fur streaked with whip marks, growls low. The eyes of a second hellhound burn menacingly in the corner. The hellhounds devour the zebra meat in a few massive bites, and they let out a contented growl.
these people not hear us? For real? Kayo is badly injured, but she's managing to hold it together. You alright? No time to talk. Cody kneels and picks up the fawn guard shotgun. It's time to finish this. Okay, heck yeah. that elevator out. I guess we won't be able to loot the place if we do that. The manic voice booms over the penthouse PA system. You really think you can come in here and shoot up my place? You know who I am? You're the guy who needs to shut up.
I'm actually not as badly interested as I thought I was. Really? It's 99%. No, I can't! And with a bloody gurgle, Stevie J is no more. Thanks. Okay, screw covers. Let's just uh, hop out here. Time you got here, Paco. Who's your friend? I'm Baconator. I'm here to rescue you. Yeah, and who said I need rescuing? Well, I guess it turns out I did, though. Thanks. Coyote, we need to get back to the Union. Miss Kubota has that med lab in the basement. No. No, I need to finish the other thing I came here for. I need to find something for Mr. Delilah first. A stash of gems. Delilah, I thought you'd never do another deal with that man. Look, Paco, I needed an excuse to come back here and settle some debts. Figured, figured I might as well get paid for it. Paco, help her get back to Union. I'll find those gems. Sure. Come on, Coyote, let's go. They call me Old Gem Finder. CBJ's passcodes. Oh. Do people keep gems in um, their kitchen? Do I need to deal? I would like an additional weapon slot. Maybe I should give myself a little bit of ranged combat. This will give me something to do when I'm not directly controlling my drones. I don't need full auto, I don't think.
biotech useful? Enemy hit points was below, that is useful. Let's get two biotechs when we can. Oh, what is this? This is an elevator? I don't want to use the elevator yet. Tell me I don't have more zebra meat. Gems. They're gems, Betty. Despite Coyote's clear desire to stand on her own two feet, Paco needs to help her through the door into the seamstress's union. Heads raise, and the front room of the bar falls strangely silent. Paco stands by her side now, not speaking, his dark eyes flat with fury. Coyote presses a rag to her clawed-up face. She winces, but manages to keep control as she breathes in slow, deep breaths to manage the pain. Taking a closer look, you see her arm isn't much more than shreds of meat and broken bone, held together by tendons and burned skin. It'll be a miracle if she still has it by the end of the night. Ouch. Miss Kaboto is tending bar herself when Paco walk carries the mangled and bleeding coyote into the union. As soon as the boss lady lies, lays eyes on her missing bartender, the place gets quiet fast. By the time she rounds the bar to meet you, Coyote is the color of wet spackle, and there's nothing new in her eye. Oh, and there's something new in her eye. Fear. This woman has faced down hellhounds, but the sight of Mrs. Kaboto has her staring at the floor and mumbling. Woman, how dare you miss two shifts and then come back and bleed all over my floor? I'm... I'm sorry, Miss Kubota. I had a run that went bad. Soka! I can see that! Your arm's a mess! Was this your crusade again? Don't answer! It will only upset me further! You caused me to worry about you, Coyote, and that distracted me from business! Hi, Miss Kubota. My apologies again. Cherry, take her downstairs to Dr. Castle! Yes, ma'am. And tell Castle to put something new and shiny where that arm used to be. Miss Kubota, I can't afford a cyber arm. I'm aware of your financial situation. When you're healed, we'll discuss the concept of Giri, the debt of honor. Now, go. 
bleed elsewhere? Yes, ma'am. Sweet. Her anger at Coyote's rashness slowly washes from her eyes and is replaced by tears. She sniffs, wipes them away, wipes them away, and inclines her head to. Domo arigato, Baconator! That girl's precious to me! It's not often we see acts like these in the Barrens! You have performed a great service for my little family, and I welcome you into my home. Consider it yours while your work keeps you here. But we both know that words are mere air. Beyond my thanks, I offer you renumeration. Please take it as a show of respect. Uh, I'm honored, Miss Kubota. Thank you. You are most welcome, and I offer more than simple lodging. You will find that there's more to Union than meets the eye. Below us is a small facility exclusively for discriminating independent operatives like yourself. In it you will find vendors selling the best gear the black market has to offer, a fully equipped cyber dock, and a secure place to rest when the dreck hits the fan, as they say. Uh, my, you're quite the entrepreneur. Indeed. Normally, I require a percentage of the runner's income for the use of this facility. But as I said, your family now. Consider it on the house. To gain entrance, play G-A-F-F-C on the piano. Sweet. Play NERPS on the piano. Van Gross is busy talking on his comlink, checking his heads-up display and motioning to a runner standing nearby. All at the same time, he's an intense little man, and you get the sense he likes to look busy. I'm Van Gross. Make it quick. Biz is good. Talk to me. Uh, I do street work. Got anything for me? He still hasn't looked at you. He's going a mile a minute. Nothing for you tonight. Sorry. I'm doing a thing right now. Important thing. Talk to you later. Oh, hey, God, one more thing. He covers his comlink for a moment, tilts his head your way, but you can see he's still staring at his HUD. I'm a fence, too. If you got anything you need to unload, come see me. Nerves. The hulking troll bouncer in the immaculate suit stands as impassively as ever. The absence of dust on his broad shoulders is the only real indication that the man ever moves. He nods to you when you approach. Evening, I see Coyote's back, looking only a little worse for wear. We have you to thank for that? Uh, they have in her back part, yes. You have the gratitude of everyone here, especially mine couldn't stomach losing anyone else so soon after what happened to Sam. You're just a big old sheepdog, ain't ya? Not the comparison made of most trolls, but I'm happy to defy expectations. Mind if I ask you a few questions? I haven't minded so far. Um... You hear anything else about Sam's death? People are saying it was the Ripper, but people say a lot of things about what they don't know, and what they don't understand. That should be going. Let's go check out our fancy new shopping area. Oh, wait, wait, we can talk to the cleaner. Johnny leans on a seemingly new mop and surveys the crowd at the Union. Thanks for the tip of the other day. Miss Capoto said I should go to the safe house, but I don't quite know where that... I do know where it is. What all these options make it sound like I don't know? I just need to play on the piano. Yeah, that piano there is a little bad tune. Better check it out. Sweet. G-A-F-F-C. 
As you slowly peck the notes out on the keyboard, they spark a faint memory of wonder, immediately forgotten as the entire piano slides to the left, revealing a hidden staircase. You descend the stairs into Union Safe House. Or do you? You do. Welcome, no bunks available. Oh, here's the Ripper. Make it quick, need to operate. Thanks for helping me out back there. You look like you could use a hand. Ouch, bad joke right now. Okay, yeah, true. Sorry, I didn't think about that. Okay, folks, I'm going to have to ask you to go sit in the waiting area, watch some trivid or something. This young lady and I have work to do. Uh, we'll ask for questions later. Take it easy, Coyote. We'll be here when you wake up. Oh. So that ain't about me going to sleep. Just give me something to bite on. You're a tough kid, but you're not that tough. Okay, Coyote, let's take a look at your face. Leave it. Excuse me? Coyote! I earned this face, but being stupid, I'm gonna keep it. End story. Whatever you say, kid. With one swift move, she sinks a syringe into Coyote's thigh. Nighty night. Cody looks both better and worse than the last time you saw her. All the gaping holes are plugged and she's sporting a shiny new cyber arm. But now that the adrenaline has worn off, it's clear that she needs some rest. Good morning. Thanks to the miracle of modern science, combined with Doc Castle's magical healing powers, I'm almost good as new. Better, really. Uh, can I talk to you for a few minutes, Coyote? About Sam. Sam Watts? What about him? He's dead. Holy Drek. Sam. I can't say I'm surprised. He was on a downward spiral for a long time. What can I tell you? You served Sam the night he died. What do you remember about that night? I don't know, it was a pretty average night. Regular crowd, as I remember. Sam was drinking with a guy named Armitage. Jake Armitage? Yeah, you know him? Met him. He's a charmer, too. I like gingers. Anyway, Jake and Sam were tossing or having a few. Well, Jake was having a few. Sam was tossing him back, but good. Eventually, he got loud, the way he sometimes did when he mixed drinking and who knows what. And Miss Kubota wanted him ejected. Mr. Kluwa wasn't around. Can't remember why. So she asked Jake to do the honors. Jake dragged him, dragged him out the back into the alley. And that's the last time I saw Sam. You said he got loud. Do you remember what he was saying? Hmm. Standard Sam drank Drek. How he grew up rich and he didn't deserve this. How he hated his mother. How he loved his mother. It's pretty pathetic stuff. How bad was his drinking? If it wasn't, if it was just the drinking, it would have wouldn't it would have been bad. But Sam wasn't the monogamous type. He dabbled in everything. Booze, chips, drugs. He loved the nitro, whatever he could get his hands on. It wasn't always like that, but once he got sick, he started using more and more stuff to try and forget about it. Wait a minute, he was sick? Dying, didn't you know? Yeah, everyone could tell. You could just look at him and see he was a walking corpse. It had to be the drinking. 
Then he disappeared for a while, and one day he came back all better. Looked good, even. Uh, let me guess, he got a new liver. They say how he got better. He says mom helped him out. Never said how, though. Do you have any enemies? Hmm. Enemies? That's hard to say. Sam partied hard, and when he did, he ran his mouth off pretty good. Got his ass kicked on more than one occasion. But no, I don't think he had any enemies. At least none I'm aware about. Where'd he live? On the streets, mostly. He'd occasionally convince someone to let him flop on their couch. But he'd always overstay his welcome and get kicked out a few days. After a few days. Sometimes I'd sneak him down here so he could crash in one of the bunks. He used one the night before I saw him last. Tell me, I hear you liked him. I did. He made me laugh. No one else seemed to like Sam's jokes, but I did. Did you guys jam? Whoa! She smiles at Paco. Easy, lover. No, it wasn't like that. We were friends. I guess I knew him the best of everyone here. Sorry he's gone. Uh, well, thanks, Coyote. Now I need you to do something for me. What do you need, babe? I need you to talk to Mr. Delilah for me about the Royale run. He's usually upstairs. Tell him I didn't get the gems. Maybe I can take another run at it when I recover. Wait, I have the gems. Why wouldn't I... Why wouldn't I just give her the gems? What? The bunk is a mess and reeks of booze. Searching through the sheets, blankets, and pillow, you find an odd photo an old photograph that's seen a lot of wear. The pictures of a blonde boy and girl, they're both the age 14, sitting on a dock at the edge of a lake. They appear to be twins. The boy has, has his arm tight around the girl's shoulders and is mugging for the camera. The girl's planting a kiss on his cheek while making rabbit ears behind his head with her fingers. Written in a woman's hand are the words, Sam and Jessica, Lake Sammamish, State Park, Summer 2040. Uh, can we tell Coyote? Yo, dog, I got those gems. No? I don't understand. Okay, I can deliver the stones. Did, uh, you're back. I think the highlights of the Wolves game will be on soon. Want to take a load off and watch with me? Sam had a sister. Hmm. Yeah, I think he did. He mentioned her once. It didn't sound like they got along that well. You're calm like chirps. Chips. You're calm like chips? And the screen shows the smiling face of Officer Aguirre. If he is smiling, it must be about money. Are all cops as happy as you? Oh, no. I, uh, on the take. I don't want to. Officer Aguirre, what a pleasure to hear from you. Yeah, yeah, we're, we're buddies. Let's, let's go dancing soon. Listen, the Ripper got a new one. The victim worked at the NTSB investigation facility down on the docks. You owe me for this. Put on my tab. You there now? Better get here quick before McCluskey arrives. Image on, your PDA dissolves. Another Ripper murder? Where? The docks. I've got to go. Okay, listen, I want to help. You dragged me out of the Royale before. Something bad happened. Worse than getting my arm torn off. And Sam was my friend. You hear? Th you head to the docks and I'll see if I can track down Sam's sister, Jessica. She might be able to help us. Thanks, I appreciate the help. Uh, in Shadowrunner circles, 
the term doctor is often used quite liberally to describe any sawbones with a needle and thread, but in the case of the Union's resident medical expert, nothing could be further from the truth. The safe house boasts a fully equipped medical suite complete with shamanistic or shamanic fetishes. This is the sixth world medicine of the highest caliber. The doctor herself is an unassuming sort, perhaps the type to go unnoticed entirely, if not for the sprightly spirit perched on her shoulder like her own personal gargoyle. The spirit's burning eyes follow you constantly, even as the doctor's own eyes are buried in her charts. However, she does look up long enough to acknowledge your approach. I am Dr. Castle. I understand you were instrumental in bringing Coyote back to us. Thank you for that. Nolsheen, now fixing up her arm. That was a piece of work. Surprisingly routine, as it so happens. I can tell you're surprised to find a full-service med bay under a dive bar in a slum. Don't be. This is a shadow runner bar, after all. For a purveyor of cyberware and trauma kits, there's no better place to set up practice. I patch runners up, install and maintain their cyberware, and provide medical supplies for their runs. I may not be as mobile as Doc Wagon, but I'm the next best thing. Can I help you with anything? Cyberware. Hell yeah. Ooh, that's expensive. That's not yet. Uh, so Mersman here, he sells what again? Clothing? Yeah, change your clothes, change your life, right? Probably magical crap. Past the bar, the edges of the safe house become somewhat indistinct due to the magical haze surrounding a particular elf. The man seems only half of this realm, his mind wandering the far horizons of astral space while his body pedals his otherworldly wares. Good evening, young elf, and welcome to this humble home that we call the Union. I am Algernon Halfdream. To ease your way through the Sixth World, I offer you the best in magical foci, spells, and fetishes for the conjuring of spirits. Yeah, not my thing, dog. TJ Groverman, why you sell guns? Ugh. Theodore Buster Groverman is a well-groomed orc, dressed with a precision that suggests the straight lines of a military officer's uniform. His hair is cropped short, high and tight, as they say. And the neatness this presents is only compromised by the uneven tusks protruding from his mouth. The only other defect in this picture of perfection is the man's cybernetic right arm, which is obvious enough to be noticeable, but not so obvious as to ruin the line of his suit. Um, so this is body shaming right here. This is shaming his teeth. He, he can't help that. The only defect in his picture of perfection. Come on. When he speaks, the orc's voice is soft and thoughtful. Oh. And he talks almost exclusively in numbers, calipers, ranges, rounds per second, arc of fire, razoring factor, tensile strength, and of course, price. Bunker Buster Grubberman at your service. Friends call me Buster. I also answer to Sergeant, Sir, and even Theodore on occasion. Anytime you're in the market for firearms, ammunition, or ordnance, I'm your man. Let's take a look.
Actually, I think I'm good. I'm just gonna stick with my AK-97. Nothing right now, but... What do you sell? Do you sell Cyberdyne's? Every inch of the tech alcove is covered in a chaotic patchwork quilt of circuit boards, chips, wires, displays, and a million other things that you can't identify. In the eye of this techno-bit storm stands a dwarf, immaculately dressed and supremely calm. I know that look. Don't let the size of the shop fool you. I can get any Matrix hardware or software that exists. And if it doesn't exist, then I can get it made for you. Any questions I can answer? Or any gear you need? What do you have for sale? Uh, I do want a deck. Mm, even if it's a crap one. Should I go for decking three? You know what? I think I might. Oh! Oh no, I just skipped that. Well, in the same overalls you saw him in upstairs, down here, leaning over a workbench cramped with circuit boards, cables, and chips, Johnny Clean seems like a totally different person. You get the impression that Johnny was once as hot and as invisible as the most infamous deckers today. Good to see you down here. Happy to be of help if I can be. Uh, see you guys. Uh, when I have three karma, that's just enough, actually. Oh, I did not uh, spend. I have no idea what the heck I'm doing with this stuff. Um,
So I've wasted all of my money, but uh Go give Delilah his stones. Mr. Delilah looks small and tough, with an untraceable shoddy on his back and a heavy vest under his trench coat. He's got the air of someone who gets things done and occasionally does them himself. He might be an ex-runner. One of the rare ones smart enough to move over to management when he felt his reflexes slowing down. What do you want? Mr. Delilah, we have business to discuss. What business? I got no business with you. Uh, we're with Coyote. She's indisposed at the moment. At the mention of Coyote, he finally gives you his full attention. Why didn't you say so? Coyote's late and my client's getting anxious. Where is she? Um, she's downstairs in the med bay. Got her arm torn off on the job. No kidding. Hmm. Well, whatever. She's tough. She'll pull through. So are you two. I'm Baconator. He's Paco. Great. We're all introduced. Now give me my stones. Let's just give him all of them. Give him all the stones. In an instant, there's a jeweler's scope on his eye, moving quickly through what appear to be the most valuable stones. He stops when he finds what appears to be an ordinary pebble inscribed with Hebrew characters. That's the one. He pockets it. Okay, you done good, but you're late, and Coyote knows that in this case, late equals no payment. But I'm feeling magnanimous and mag magnanimous tonight. So sorry, magnanimous tonight. So you guys can keep the rest of the gems as your reward. Mr. Delilah looks you up and down, takes you all in. Listen, you look like the sort of man who might run a crew of your own one day. You might need a little talent. When that happens, you come to me. I'll set you up. Looks like you impressed him. I know a fence for those gems. Van Gas, follow me. Yeah, I'll follow you, Pac. Van Gross, not Van Goss. Paco doesn't even know your name, Mr. Von Gross. Von Gross is fiddling with his cyber eye while noodling on his PDA. You're back, still busy. What's your story? I can see you're a busy man. That's right, and so I wouldn't bother you if you if I hadn't come into possession of these rare stones. Rare stones, huh? Let's see these rare stones. You hear the servos in Van Gross's cyber eye whir as the magnifying lens slips into position. He bends his head over the stones for two seconds, maybe less. Hmm, where'd you get this, Drek? A gumball machine? I'll give you a thousand for him. You know what, um... I just need money right now to, in case I need it after spending everything on that cyber deck for no reason. How am I doing? Oh, let's just uh, skedaddle. Leave the seamstresses union behind. You head to the docks. The Ripper killed Sam, and maybe he or she slipped up with his latest victim. Left some useful evidence. Only one way to find out. South Seattle's your typical industrial area. Grit, grime, and gray. The rain doesn't help matters any. Layers of dirt mixed with an abandoned 
mixed with abandoned wooden pallets, repurposed into makeshift furniture for the day workers. Garbage collects in the gutters of the broken down street. Disreputable is this district's middle name. Your destination, the National Transportation Safety Board Warehouse, is located on a small strip of dock towards the less maintained end of the waterfront. Despite the presence of those who linger in such places, it's quiet as you approach the gate. Um, hmm. Do I need to repair my boy? I don't know how. A streetwalker. Hey, you looking for a good time? You know anything about the NTSB? <laughs> yeah, the bums around here have been stealing old crap from that place for years. Not worth my time, though. guard looks bored. He toys with his gun absentmindedly, like he might shoot something on a whim just to watch it die. Hey there, you're about to trespass on corporate property. You looking to get dusted, street stum? Uh, Officer Aguirre, uh, Aguirre, Officer A, called me in. He needs me to rule out if the killer bypassed security or if they were let in. Oh, uh, of course, I'll open the gate. Aguirre's just inside the warehouse. Definitely no holes in our security here. Tip top shape. Sweet. Do a little run around, a tiny bit of explore you can explore. Oh, a helichopper. Inside the large gray warehouse is as typical as the outside. High ceilings adorned with girders and rickety catwalks top a huge utilitarian room. Concrete and steel walls meet a concrete floor. This is a place for storing things and nothing more. Despite the quiet on the outside, the inside is a hornet's nest of Lone Star officers going about their business. In the center of the activity is the Emerald City Ripper's latest victim, with uniforms everywhere. No one stops you at the door. It seems this case hasn't leaked to the press yet. Lone Star, no, you've got a job to do. Is that McCluskey? Please tell me that's not McCluskey. Okay, let's have a look-see. Door's locked. You might be able to bypass if you can get under the maintenance panel. Okay. Is you right now, Baconator? Talk to Aguirre. Okay, I get to him, but I still want to look around. Okay, okay, fine. I will talk to... My good friend. 
Uh, took, took your sweet time, didn't you? You know the traffic these days, fill me in. Uh, we had time to go over the evidence while you were uh, en route. Turns out this might not be a ripper murder after all. I left the computer on in the office over there if you want to see for yourself. The victim worked here at NTSB Warehouse as a black box researcher. NTSB? The National Transportation Safety Board. This warehouse is uh, it's used to go over the wreckage from plane crashes trying to determine what happened. The Vic was in charge of their highest priority investigation at the moment. We gone through the victim's computer and uh, his case notes indicate he was selling secrets. Idiot kept records. Uh, scientists don't make good criminals. Tell me about it. Some runner like you probably offed him to cover up his court master's involvement and tried to make it look like a ripper killing. Here's the office key. Check it out yourself if you want. Uh, okay, let's talk to Jurassic. Baconator! Surprised to see you here. Let me guess, Officer Aguirre tipped you off. So suppose you must have made an impression on him at the market yesterday. Or your cred stick did, anyway. <laughs> anyway, surprise, we've got another Ripper victim on our hands. You look like you've been putting in some overtime, Dresden. What can you tell me about this victim? The victim's male. Mixed Native American descent, age 38. Based on the condition of the body, it looks like he was killed around 2 in the morning. And yes, I am a little tired. Bodies have been piling up like cordwood, it seems. Cause of death unknown. Several internal organs were removed from his body after death, quite gruesomely. I'm not sure if the killer even knew what they wanted before they started cutting. Not much else to tell, really. He does have a lot of pre-existing scar tissue, so he probably had major surgery at some point in recent history. Unfortunately, with the organs gone, I can't determine the nature of the surgery. Nice hole where his chest was. So what on the butcher shop? So what was on the butcher shopping list? Well, the killer definitely took the lungs. The more I look at it, though, the other missing organs may just be eviscerated within the chest cavity. Who's that woman over there? No clue. She just showed up. Next of kin, I think. How's Aguirre doing on the case? He seems like a real go-get. A choir would love to solve it before McCluskey and get his gold detective shield. Plus, he'd love to see McCluskey suck it in front of his superiors. He's already tried to bribe me to keep information from McCluskey and slip it to him. I'm inspired by their tireless pursuit of justice. Did take it. <laughs> Do you have any idea how much this job pays these days, sir? I don't think Aguirre's officer's salary is going to do much to seduce me into helping him. So it sounds like the Ripper's taking a different trophy from each victim. Sam's liver's got lungs, any theories? Sorry, I don't do theories. I'm just a scientist who happens to prefer dead people. However, while there was massive damage in the chest cavity, I can see that the victim's lungs were transplants. Which is interesting, since another victim's missing heart was also a transplant. Granted, modern medicine has made organ transplants relatively easy, but it is an odd coincidence. But as a scientist, it's just that, a coincidence. This is only the third body I've personally examined. One of our other branch managers handled the other two. If I find that more of the victims had organ transplants, I'll let you know. Good luck. Let's talk to this lady. Oh, Shannon Halfsky. Hmm, you're not a cop. She looks up, watching you warily. Nope, who's the stiff? She glares at you for a moment, and you can see pain in her eyes, along with something else. Power. He is my brother, and I'm trying to learn from him the identity of his killer. 
but I'm afraid his spirit's too disoriented by his recent journey to answer me. Wait, you're a shaman? Yes, for all the good it's doing me. If I could just make contact, I might be able to deliver justice and allow my brother's spirit to rest. I can tell you're used to shouldering a heavy burden, but maybe there's an easier way. She looks at you, the flattery largely failing to affect her given the circumstances, but then inspiration dispels the dark cloud surrounding her. Perhaps my brother is too weak. That's a given. But my brother's spirit may not be alone here this night. Yes, there are others. Other spirits who may be of help. Her features harden in frustration, as if she's searching for something that remains elusive. Sighing as she opens her eyes and fixing you with a stare. Hello, Ace! But I can't do it alone. What do you need? This warehouse contains the spirits of a plane crash victim. Or, of, of multiple plane crash victims. Trapped between worlds. They wish to help. They wish to be heard, and I think they have something to say about my brother's murder. Lone Star won't let me in here, but you seem to have the run of the place. If you can find personal items that belong to the victims, I believe I can summon a spirit to speak with us. I'll need at least two such objects. Can you find them for me? Of course! So we can go in this office now, and we can screw around with this stuff over here. This old poster depicts a svelte young woman posing with an assault rifle. Oh, there's something here that was like, talk to Aguirre before I... I can't interact with it anymore. I guess we have to have a key. I guess that would be like an alternate way in if you didn't get the key. Yeah, I, I saw you you were playing it. So I assumed that is what you were streaming. This appears to be a victim's locker. The door is slightly ajar. Inside, you see several of the dead man's personal items. Inspect the toothbrush? The blue toothbrush is still wet from being used. It smells of mint and cigarettes. Sure. As you reach for the comb, the hair on the back of your ha hand stands on end. Um, when you take it off its little shelf, your heart thumps in your chest hard. This must, this must be one of the items the shaman was looking for. Okay. Researcher's work cyber terminal has been left on, presumably by the Lone Star investigators. I arrest some birds and I'm starring in the movies of an owl who has no eyes and disco club penguin. An owl who has no eyes. Interesting, Ace. Oh, oh let's read these notes. 95. Case file number 95, Federated Boeing Jetliner, IDN 2305, Corporate Owner, Ares. The plane had several mechanical issues resulting in a mayday at 3.04 a.m. on June 17, 2053. 2.45 a.m., the pilot reported that the altimeter was reading in the negative values. 2.49 a.m., the co-pilot takes over the controls as the pilot leaves the cabin to investigate the rear of the plane. Oh, the butt is the conductor. His movies are mostly westerns that take butt on a on a tranon. Butt on a tranon. You're right. <laughs> I assumed because it's a conductor that it was a train. Case file number 96, Pratt and Whitney, unmanned, IDN 3287, corporate owner, Aries, redacted, 
Redacted. A corrupted file. And the private notes. The notes that appear on screen pertain to NTSB case number 96, the crash of an Aries jetliner near UCAS and Sioux Nation border. The crash is reported by the uh, the crash is reportedly the result of an equipment failure. Reading further into the investigator's notes, however, you find substantial evidence linking the crash and experimental Renraku research initiative. This information could be worth a great deal to the right buyer. You download the researcher's notes to your PDA. Still need another personal item. If only I could get under the maintenance panel. What do you mean by that? Well, can I go ahead and give her the one item I have? Only at least two objects of significance from inside the warehouse. Oh, okay. Uh, in here, I guess. There's a large pile of old shoes on the ground next to the airplane seats. They could be discarded luggage, or possibly the shoes worn by the occupants of the plane at the time of the crash. Let's dig through it. Sorting through the shoes, you realize that there are three shoes with no matching pair. A left blue sneaker, a right red heel pump, and a left black dress shoe. Inspect the heel pump. The pump is a department store knockoff of an Italian brand. It's otherwise unremarkable. The dress shoe is a black lace-up with a rubber sole. The sneaker is a child's and has a musty, sweaty smell. Wait. I'm smelling the old shoes? Oddly, you get a sort of, a sort of shock, as if from static electricity, when you touch it. This must be one of the items the shaman was looking for. You take the shoe. Um, shoe acquired. It's hard to say when this heap of, whether this heap of items and refuse recovered from a plane crash, or simply uh, hasn't been taken out yet. Let's dig through the trash. A sticky substance of some sort seems to have seeped through the trash pile, and your hands are quickly covered with the stuff. After searching for a minute, you unearth a handful of interesting items. A cred stick. It's still functional. You slot it in and get 200 million. The earrings may have burnished steel, formed in the shape of a small salmon. An intense primal fear washes over as you touch its surface. This must be one of the items. Wait, so I have more than two items now to give her. A dented tin lunchbox that seemed better days. You can barely make out the face of a grinning troll on the front. There's an open vent on this wall. It's too small for you to fit through, but you might be able to send a drone through. Yeah, yeah, I do. You're right. Your drone fits through the hole, buzzes to left, and activates the locked door from the inside. Well, I'm so glad I picked being a rigger. I like having a drone. Is that all like pointless though? There's nothing in here. Oh, there is. Give me this. A magnetic screwdriver, nice. A sonic screwdriver. The locked panel comes easily unscrewed. Oh. An old diary. I can't read it? Okay. Don't 
Okay, that's all that's in there. Can I really not read the old diary? Oh, I wanted this. Let's get that. Feels as though you've found enough objects. Yeah, you're there. You hand her the objects you found. She closes her eyes and chants over them for a time. When her eyes open again, they're filled with tears. Thank you. These are the items that I will need. It shouldn't take me long to. What the hell's all this? Uh oh. Uh, she's the victim's uh, sister, sure, sir. She. This is a crime scene, officer, not some salish drum circle. Uh, Isn't it standard procedure to contact the next of kin? Ma'am, consider yourself contacted. Now get the hell out. Come on. If we stay much longer, I'm liable to do something I'd regret, or worse, something I'd enjoy. That man is an ass. She stares daggers at McCluskey from across the warehouse. But there's no helping it now. I should just be grateful you were able to collect these items before those clods carted everything off. Can we still summon the spirit? Not from here, I'm afraid. Spirits such as these have domains to which they are anchored. We need to get back in there. Um, not looking good now, but do you have any plans for this evening, baby? A little breaking and entering, perhaps? Under the cover of darkness. You sure you're up for this? means your brother's killer doesn't take another life, then yes. Thank you. Now since we have the time, we should probably enlist some help. They may post security overnight. And I'm going to go out on a limb and say you know where to find the kinds of people we need. Just smile. Good, I'll put up the money if you find the bodies. She produces a fistful of crumpled Nguyen from inside a leather pouch, starts to count it and shoves the whole wad at you. Meet me back here at midnight. The spirits will be strong then. Sweet. As you start to leave the warehouse, your comic -like chirps and you see the face of Coyote pop on the screen. Coyote looks tense. Hoi, Baconator! You're in the middle of something. Just getting jerked around by Lone Star. Same old thing. I hear ya. Her jaw sets. I don't know if I'll if I ever told you this, but I was born in the Royale. BTL pushers like Stevie J ran the squats. Ran my world when I was growing up. Sounds nasty. It was, for all kind of reasons. I have a cousin, Gino, who's been missing for months. He hit the sprawl about a year ago and immediately fell in with some tweakers. Bad guys. They hooked him on high amp dream chips and started using him for all sorts of dreck. I tried to help him, but he pushed me away. Then he disappeared. I've been shooting up BTL labs ever since trying to find him. 
guessing you have a new lead. It's not a lead. I know exactly where he is this time. Got an old friend who eyeballed him herself. I'm on my way. Paco's with me, but we could use another hand. You in? I need you right now. On my way. Let's do this real quick. A cluster of dilapidated buildings stands where Coyote told you to meet her, uh, and appears to be the remnants of a public housing project. The buildings look like a cesspool filled with human debris. You find her standing with Paco on a street corner, eyeing the roofs, the doorways, the windows. Despite his attempts to engage her, Coyote barely says a word as the three of you weave your way through the tenements. She walks purposefully, her new cyber hand flexing open and closed with each step. It's unclear whether the action's voluntary or not. <clears throat> Excuse me. You circle around the back of a building and Coyote jumps up, grabs the bottom, rung, the bottom rung of a fire escape ladder and pulls it down. Without a signal, she starts her climb towards the roof. Paco looks at you worriedly and then starts up the ladder. <coughs> Thanks for meeting us, Baconator. I owe you one. No sweat. Figured you could use the backup. Yeah, you never know what sort of firepower to expect in one of these BTL squats. Oh, hey, listen. I got good news for you. You know Sam's sister, Jessica? One of my contacts found her for me while you were on your way here. I called her and asked her to meet you at the Union later today. Hope that helps. Good job. Thanks. Least I can do. Alright, let's get this done. My cousin Gino should be in one of the squats past that door up ahead. Here there's a whole lab set up in there. From my experience, there's usually a lookout watching for cops outside and a guard at the door inside. Like I said, I don't know how much firepower to expect, but these guys are nasty. So stay on guard. I just want to get in, grab Gino, and get out. Yeah, right behind you, babe. Let's do this. Let's save, and then I... I think I'm done for today. I have to get ready to do some Pathfinder later on, and I have to go eat something delicious, and um, yeah, and then I'm out of here. Uh, how the heck do I leave the game? Um, oh, exit. Save and quit. Whew. Thanks for chilling. Uh, thank you again to um, uh, who was it? Uh, Nubasaur42. That's cool. I don't think he's still watching, but thanks again. And uh, yeah, later I will. Yeah, I'll see you guys. Uh, I might stream something tomorrow night. I don't know. But uh, if not, I'll see you Tuesday where I will be streaming something entirely different. So.